Hi, this tutorial is called Texture Cone, and the whole point of this assignment is to get people comfortable with maneuvering between layers and making abstract selections and coming up with kind of a simple composition that involves multiple colors, multiple textures and layers, and hopefully things that you can apply to other projects that you do along the way. So here's my example. Um, everyone's going to start with a cone, that's kind of just the, the basics, and a white background. And then I'm going to give you guys the option to choose whatever sort of shape that you want to use to create um, what's coming out of the cone. So you could do triangles or diamonds or teardrops or um, abstract shapes, rectangles, squares, whatever you can think of um, to create your project. All right, so the way I started this assignment is, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one down here for a minute, and I'm gonna open up this document right here. It's called Texture Cone. Um, I've actually put together an entire series of different textures. Um, now you can borrow this document from me, or you can gather your own textures, whichever you prefer. In fact, taking your own texture photographs is an excellent assignment in itself because you really have a chance to explore how photos can be manipulated in different ways and used in a project. Um, we're also going to be opening a second document, so I'm just going to go File New, and I'm going to call this Texture Cone Tutorial. You can call it Texture Cone if you'd like. And I'm going to keep it at 8.5 by 11 inches. And I'm going to keep it in 300 resolution. Now the problem with 300 resolution is that if you do that, um, you have to make sure the photos you're working with are also 300 resolution or high resolution images. If they're not, you probably want to lower your resolution slightly. Um, I'm going to keep it in RGB color. And the background contents, um, I'm going to just go with a white for the background contents. And then hit OK. Okay, so I've got a lot of documents open here. The example one, I'm just going to shut that down. So I've just got these two. I prefer to keep my documents floating so that I've got side by side and I, I kind of work on them like a document and a junk document. So I'm going to slide some things around here and get ready to work on this. Okay, and just a little FYI, this version of Photoshop um, has changed slightly from our older version and to get your um, black background to go away you just go window and make sure application frame is not check marked and then you really have the option to have these two documents side by side. So I'm going to just hide every layer and I recommend collecting your texture layers first so you have that document ready to go. And the last layer in this is a set of ice cream cones. Um, what I'm going to do with this is just borrow one of these cones and I'll show you how to, to get it removed from the background. I just got my um, magic wand, click on, oops, make sure I'm actually selected that layer, click on the layer and hit delete to remove the white space, command D to deselect, and then I'm just going to grab the cone with one of my selection tools. In this case I'm just going to get a rectangle and get the whole ice cream cone right over here to my blank document. It's a nice big clear resolution cone here. Um, now I want to get rid of the ice cream because I'm making my own abstract image on top of the cone. So I'm going to just use the same tool and just kind of lop off the top by hitting delete. And there's my cone. So I'm all set with kind of a blank canvas to work on. So since I did a demonstration using um, sort of a crescent moon as my shape. I'm going to do this same thing in the tutorial. So here's my first texture. And you can do so many things here. I could take this tool, um, you know, the straight um, lasso tool, and I could just make triangles. So here's a selection, get my move tool, and pull it over. I could do a whole bunch of different triangles kind of flying out of the cone and try to make a neat abstract look to it. Um, but since I was doing crescent moons, they take a little, a couple more steps, so I just want to show those steps. I'm going to start with the um, circle tool or elliptical marquee, and I'm just going to hold 
um, my shift key while I drag it. Oops, let me deselect that first. So hold my shift key while I drag a circle. And I try to kind of hover around with my spacebar down to find an area of texture that I really like. I kind of like the variety right here. And then I'm going to get that same tool and hold Option. So this is subtracting from the selection. So if I just kind of hover over it and subtract this piece, now I'm left with a little crescent moon to select. So now I'm going to get my Move tool, and I'm just going to pull this whole piece over to my nice, fresh, white document for the cone. I'm just going to kind of build and rotate, and I might even make some color changes as I go. So I'm going to go back to this document, Command-D to deselect, go to my next layer, which happens to be a desert, nice orangey colors, and make another selection. So I'm going to hold Shift and drag, and then I'm going to hold Option to subtract from that selection to make my crescent moon. I'm going to get my Move tool, and I'm just going to slide it off that page and then rotate the other direction and hit return. So here's where I might want to start playing with some color options. So a simple way to do that, and again, there are many ways to do it, but I'm just going to go Image Adjustments, Hue Saturation, and I can just kind of slide through my hues and choose something maybe a little bit more intense, like this bright pink, and then hit OK. Just quite uh, just a quick little adjustment. Command D to deselect. Go to my next layer. So I'm going to hide the desert. Show the leaf. And um, keep working my way through this. Now, like I said, I think it's kind of neat to have some consistency with your shapes. Um, just repetition is always nice in design. So um, uh, I kind of stuck with the crescent moon for my example, but variety is good too. So this is all about kind of playing with composition and practicing some of your Photoshop tools here. So I'm just kind of selecting different pieces and building on my layers. And I'm going to keep doing that. I will show you how to do that drop because that was a little bit of a different effect. And for that little droplet, I actually used this tool, which is called the custom shape tool. And inside Photoshop, there's a menu that comes up. Sometimes it's hard to see everything. It's kind of shoved up in the corner, but you can pull that menu down. If you don't see all the options, oftentimes you just need to go into this menu and click on all. So now that I see all the options, um, I'm going to just look around for just kind of like a drop, teardrop. Here's a, a teardrop right here. And I just want to drag right where I want it to be here. And at first, it's just a color. And what I do with this is I'm just going to go to Layer, Rasterize, Shape. And now it's a solid color. But what I'm going to do is click on it. And um, I now have a selection that I can work with to fill. And um, I'm going to actually do this a separate way. So to do this a separate way, I'm going to deselect it. And I'm actually going to pull one of my textures over. So say I want to make this out of hay. So I'm going to pull this whole texture over here. This is actually kind of a silly way to do this. I should have done it a different way. But you know what? When you're exploring in Photoshop, you sometimes come up with things that aren't quite what you were expecting. So I'm going to put this right on top, put it under that shape, Select that shape. Oops. Make sure I'm on the shape layer to get it selected. And then I'm going to go to the hay layer and I'm going to go select inverse and delete. Now I can simply get rid of this layer that had the original teardrop on it and deselect. And now I've got a textured teardrop. And I can change the color of that layer by going Layer or Image Adjustments and Hue Saturation. And give it a different color if I'd like to kind of keep in consistency with the design. And that's how it could work over here. Um, this tutorial is getting a little bit longer because I fouled up a bit here. If I were to do that an easier way, I would put the teardrop actually on this area on the side 
and um, just kind of pull it over. So if I did a teardrop here, I could just go layer, rasterize, shape, select that space, and I could pull from any layer that I wanted this way. So let's say I wanted to do the rest. I could take that layer, and then I can pull that teardrop over here. So that's really kind of an easier approach. And actually, I'm kind of glad I went through all those steps because it kind of proves that using Photoshop, you can do things so many different ways. So if somebody next to you is has a different approach or finds that it's easier to do something a different way, by all means, explore and, and figure out how how it works best for you to do the assignment. So your end result should look um, something like the texture cone example. Um, so here's what I'm starting with. Here's my end result. Um, I want you to try to have at least 10 colors or so or more. I think I've seen examples kind of like this and the more variety of um, size and placement and color, I think the better they look. And also it just gives you a lot of time to practice and get better at feeling comfortable in Photoshop as you're working.